Ginger Snaps Back is a period piece. Yes, they have Tremors 4 syndrome, except Tremors 4 still had some elements of fun and originality to it. I can't blame them for making the decision to set the movie back in time, mostly because both of our protagonists are long since out of the picture. That's not to say the ending of Part 2 couldn't have been expanded upon, but the title would be a little bit irrelevant at that point. So instead, they wrote Ginger Snaps if it were set in the 19th century. Let's get this out of the way. This movie involves none of the same people who created the first two films, and if you watched it, you probably wouldn't need to see the credits to realize that, because none of the humor or intelligence put into those movies is present here. It's a bit against the tone of the first two movies as well, as it seems to romanticize the sisters' relationship and the werewolf curse. It's all a bit… too human. It's not that I'm even against the idea of doing the same movie, but in the past. They could have used some of the same elements and changed them to fit the time period, and it might have been a little creative. Don't pretend it's anything more than it is, a retelling of the same story in period piece. But trying to connect this to the other movies hurt it a bit. This is supposed to be the beginning of the curse, the strengthening of the werewolf bloodline, or something. I don't know. It's the beginning of something, I assume, since the subtitle is The Beginning. And it all starts with two sisters. So Ginger and Bridget were turned into werewolves because of two sisters in the past who looked exactly like them also named Ginger and Bridget? What? And they didn't even bother trying to write them like they're from the 19th century. I kept expecting them to pull out a cell phone and try to call for help. These people are fucked. It doesn't even properly write them into the setting, which again makes me wonder why this was made. The werewolf makeup takes a bit of a dive, too. The makeup on Ginger isn't nearly as good as it was in the first film. As for the full wolf effects, I like the idea of the stilts on the front hands to elongate the legs, but in execution it can come off a bit goofy. The added element of the Native Americans can be a bit silly cryptic as well, like the old woman who apparently just stands around in the woods waiting for a couple sisters to come by to give skull necklaces to. Ooh, spooky! It doesn't add anything new to the mythos, nor does it offer much in terms of humor or horror. The well-thought-out themes of the previous two movies are thrown out for a very generic theme of sisterhood, which really has fuck all to do with the werewolves. It seems written by someone who only had a vague understanding of the previous films. If you're a completist and you want to watch this one, I won't say it'll make you angry or even be that bad of a watch, but it's more of a curiosity than a film.